Hey guys, Tarkat here, uh, giving a little update to the Lightning Trapper now that it's in maps, very low level, level 78, I'll run a map and then I'll show you the build in action. We are using the Timeless Jewel and we've got this pretty cool hybrid setup. I'm still missing a lot of my life uh, ES, basically the Melding Cluster, and then a bunch of life nodes on the tree. I'm still missing a bunch of damage tree like Crit Multi, Jewel Supports. And I'm using just the Lightning Trap and nothing else. Um, I could fit a Lightning Spire Trap into the build. Uh, for additional clear. People have recommended Val Stormcall as a setup as well, but I'm currently having fun with just this. Um, low tier maps with low level character, and you can see it has no issues with rares or anything. And um, yeah, you can see this is exactly why I've really enjoyed Lightning Trap for this league. It's just really, really good at Legion content. Um, that dipping there was me just popping my Val Rector's Fire. So how am I sustaining? Um, so there's a few things. I have Tinker Skin, which gives me life and ES flap uh, the traps when they trigger. So when I throw a handful of traps, they pop and I get um, a little boost of life and energy shield back. I have up to 20% life regen. I get 1% life regen for each trap that is triggered recently. I have Wicked Ward on the tree, meaning that my ES recharge um, isn't interrupted. So once it started recharging, it just keeps interrupt, uh, keeps recharging. If I take damage, it doesn't stop, it just keeps slowly going up. Um, so between that and the Tinker Skin, you'll see that my energy shield regularly um, is on full or near full, uh, which is really nice. And I'm looking to have about 7k life in this build. Now, the more life I have, the more energy shield I have because of one of the timeless jewels I'm using. I popped that Varrex Fire a bit early, should have saved it for the boss. Let's just go here. And I will show you all of that now. And also, as I progress the character, I'll start doing real content, bosses, all of that good stuff with it. So, if I do that just briefly, I'm trying out a new hideout. I'm really happy with how this hideout looks. What do you reckon? So, let's get into it. So, how am I achieving this? So this time is still let's look at one of my previous videos, Glorious Vanity. Um, this is of Doriani. In my first video, I talked about putting it here, which was stupid because if I put it here, it so as you can see, it corrupts all the nearby nodes. So this node, which used to be 5% life, is now 9% fire damage. This node is now 7% spell damage instead of 10 strength. This node is 1% spell budge instead of strength. 9 cold res, 3% maximum life. Now, originally, I planned on putting it here. So I was like, oh, I don't know. I can't see any other key nodes. Because I need to hit a key node to get the corruption for the 50% of non-chaos damage taken bypasses ES. Gain 20% of maximum life as extra um, energy shield. So you can see here, without the jewel, 800, 2.1. The more life scaling I have, the more ES I get. Um, so we're just slowly filling in this cluster here. And the reason why I didn't want to put it here is obviously if I put it here, it would brick this cluster and it would brick the shadow start. So this is obviously much better. The only other things I really have going on in this character, I have two Meeks here. Uh, the Meeks don't give me any damage. They literally just give me life, but also because they give me life, they also give me energy shield. Um, but they're not required or mandatory in any sense. I have a Watcher's Eye, which gives me... Uh, no, it doesn't give me Arctage. This is Concentrated Ground I create, um, cause enemies to take extra damage. Again, it's not needed. You could use any Watcher's Eye. You could go for Wrath instead of Zealotry and use Wrath stuff. I'm just using Zealotry because I have a Zealotry thing here. Um, here we have a uh, Tempered Flesh. This is giving me 70 crit multi because it's giving me uh, multi for all the unallocated strength nodes, which is really good. And uh, that's it. I'm using a Tink Skin. I'm going to try and craft a Elder Leather Belt with increased life recovery to scale up my 20% regen that I get from Saboteur. And for Ascendancies, uh, Saboteur for the penetration, the life regen mostly. Uh, blind on hit is very nice defensive layers. A little bit of AoE is also decent. If I do run a Lightning Spire Trap at endgame, if I feel like I need it, the extra AoE will make the Lightning Spire Trap feel a little smoother. Um, Pathfinder gives me movement speed, gives me penetration, gives me flash charge generation. The flash charge generation is really nice while bossing. Because as I'm just talking with you and doing whatever, you'll see that my flasks will actually start creeping up. One really cool thing you can Hello. do is if you're doing a very serious boss like Uber Elder, you could do something like uh, Overwhelming Overflowing, is it? Where is it? I should have one here. Yeah, here. Overflowing Chalice. Now what this does is it gives you increased charges gained. Um, so if I was to empty this all out and I turn this on, 
Uh, while this is active, my other flask will very quickly fill back up. Um, so you can very easily boss and have 100% uptime of your flasks uh, on a Scion. So that's the real, the real advantage of Scion over Saboteur is the flask sustain, the extra penetration, um, and then all this defense and really cool build making. So at this point, uh, over the next couple of levels, I'm going to fill in melding. I'm going to pick up Throat Seeker, pick up Two Point Jewels. And then I'm not entirely... Oh, fill in uh, Juggernaut Cluster. And then I'm not really sure where I'm going to take the build. If I feel like I need more damage, I'll come across into Witch. I'll pick up Alchemist, pick up Annihilation. Alchemist, if I can get a Wise Oak eventually, that will also be a very nice offensive and defensive boost. And along this way, I'll pick up some Crit Multi, pick up some Light Damage, pick up a bunch of Life. I've got this three-point cluster, which gives a bunch of lightning damage, some crit multi, some uh, shock effect. Um, I can also come down this way to pick up projectile speed and damage and get a little bit more hybrid stuff down here. Um, I can come into Marauder Start for more life, which will also give me a bunch of energy shield. Basically, I'll just feel out the build as I'm leveling up. I'll just sort of see where am I going with it. I'm enjoying lightning traps so much. This is such a cool build. I'm just going to try and min-max this one build as much as I can. In terms of like items, what you're going to look for, uh, what's mandatory, um, they aren't mandatory, but they're very nice. You're going to want Shaper Gloves, which gives skills, which throw traps, throw one additional trap. So if I take out Cluster Trap, you'll see that I'm throwing two. And if I take off the gloves, now I throw one. The Lightning Trap doesn't need to be linked in the gloves. It's global. So any trap you have anywhere, like if you have a bear trap, you'll throw two. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of that. Since people ask what this is a focus button, you don't need focus in this build. This is a uh, multi-bodied ring I crafted for a different character. The shock nearby enemies I don't really need because I shock with lightning trap. This is still good though. Um, so shock isn't a set percentage damage increase. It scales on how hard you hit the boss. This is 20%. So this is a 20% guaranteed shock against bosses. So it's still nice against bosses. Um, but you could have anything on here. You don't really need the Assassin's Mark on Hit Ring. I have a lot of fluff in my gear. You could have um, Ellie Weakness on Hit, Connectivity on Hit. I'd probably rather have those. Those would be more DPS anyway. Um, but yeah, to give you an idea of how much fluff I have, I have a Flesh Offering, Spirit Offering, Bone Offering, Cast and Damage Taken setup. I have a lot of open links in this build. Uh, basically, I can shatter. I do deal a little bit of cold damage, so I shatter some corpses, but very little. Um, if I take any damage, three offerings spawn, and they consume a bunch of corpses. I've got Tempest Shield, Castle Damage Taken, Wave of Conviction. That's completely fluff. One thing that I failed to mention, which is also really cool about this build, my build also has 81 Fire Res, 80 Cold, 80 Lightning. I'm using a Saffles. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stick to using the Saffles. You could use an Arms, you could use a Crafted Shaper, you could dual wield weapons. Um, there's 20% of non-Chaos added as Chaos, really strong. Could go for dual wielding that, that'd be amazing. Just multi multi weapons. I've got terrible weapon. I'm probably going to craft a penetration scepter. Not because it's necessarily better than a dagger or a wand, but I have really cool MTX that I can only apply um, to maces or swords. So that is really the only reason I would do that. Um, other upgrades, I'm currently running seven league steps just because I'm making new character. I'm trying to be fast. I'll eventually upgrade these. And one thing I would really like to do is craft, if I can find it, on boots you can get freeze immunity. Um, so those gloves. I don't think I've got it up locked yet. I think I've only got 80%. But yeah, for an exalt, you can have a 100% chance to avoid, um, well, 100% freeze immunity, which is really strong. I'm going to try and get my flasks as open as possible so I can run more unique flasks. Um, one thing that you can do if you're an SSF or you just haven't got much currency and you're like, oh, but I don't want to spend an exalt for freeze immunity. If you're using a shield, um, you can take these three points on the tree. This node gives you 20% chance to avoid ailments while holding a shield. So with these three points, you don't need to craft freeze immune. You can just use the 80% uh, craft, which is kind of sneaky. I kind of like it. Um, I might also pick up those three points because they're just fairly effective uh, damage nodes. And uh, yeah, that's basically the build. I'm using Flame Dash for mobility. If you like um, using Shield Charge or Leap Slam and having Fortify, you can do that. Another reason why I might go for a Mace is I really don't like using Shield Charge, but I don't mind using Vigilant Strike with the Vigil Jewel. So I'll probably set up a Vigilant Strike Ancestral Call set up somewhere just for bosses so I have Fortify up more regularly. 
Uh, bear trap, steel skin, enhance, increased duration. Complete personal preference. If you have more armor, run molten shell, vol molten shell. I'm using vol righteous fire. I'm not committed to the idea. Because I am a blood magic mortal conviction build, I can only have one aura, which currently isn't even on. Uh, zealotry. Um, but that means you can't use vol grace or vol haste. If you do that, it turns off your aura, just so you're aware of that. And then I have an enhanced flame dash faster casting and a plus one shield. Again, fluff. Enduring Cry, Increased Duration, Right as far as Zealotry. You can work it all out. The most important links are really the Lightning Trap links. You don't want to run Vol Lightning Trap. I mean, you can, but I'd rather just run a normal Lightning Trap. Um, level 21, um, Cluster Trap, Pierce. That is your guaranteed 3 link. You want that while leveling. You'd use Multi Trap instead of Cluster. Trap and Mind Damage, Control Destruction, Lightning Penetration. You can... I've seen some people running both Cluster and Multi Trap, just for clear. If you're going full zoom, zoom, legion clear, dying sun, cluster trap, multi trap, you just get a shit ton of projectiles everywhere. I've seen some people doing that for deep delve pushing, and they just like off screen everything and play super safe. You can't really go wrong as long as you have pierce somewhere. I'm probably also going to try and craft a global plus one pierce on gloves and helmet. I don't think I'm ever really going to drop the pierce gem though, just because legion mobs are so tightly packed, you want as much pierce as possible. I could even take pierce on the tree, but. I'm kind of starved for points because there are so many there are so many cool things I can take. I'd rather not spend four points for two pierce when I can craft that on helm and gloves. And I don't feel like these two points are enough. Like if you only had this, you'd still want to run the gem. Or still have the crafts, if you know what I mean. But anyway. I'm Taki. I'll keep you guys updated. Scion feels amazing, man. Have a good day. Bye-bye.